It's the magic of math here, and today we're going to be interpreting and predicting using our line of fit on a scatter plot. Here's our question today. We have a question that has four parts. Here's the introduction to the four part question. The coach of a basketball team recorded X, the number of hours the team practiced before each game last season, and Y, the number of points the team scored in each game. The coach made a scatter plot and drew a line of best fit for the data as shown in this coordinate plane. And the equation for the line of best fit is given to us as y equals 4x plus 28. So before we begin the four part question, I want to make sure that everybody understands our scatter plot. So the coach of the basketball team recorded x, the number of hours the team practiced before each game. So we look at our x axis right here. That's our x-axis, and that represents the hours of practice for the team last season. Then we're looking at y, and on our scatter plot, here's our y-axis right here, and that represents the number of points that the team scored in the game. So there's a relationship in this scatter plot is the points scored last season representing the relationship between the hours of practice and the number of points the team scored. Now, on the scatter plot, which each point on here represents the relationship. So, two hours of practice, 35 points scored. So, the coach collected all this data for every week, how much the hours they practiced before a game. So, then he drew a line of best fit to use to show to represent this data. So here's the line of best fit trending with the data. You can see there's about as many points above the line as below the line trending with the data. And we're told that the equation of this line of best fit is y equals 4x plus 28. So that's the equation of this line of fit. All right, we're ready to start. Here's part A. Part A, what does the y-intercept? of the line of best fit represent in the context of the situation and explain your reasoning. So using this graph, I want you to interpret the y-intercept. So go ahead and pause the video now, record your answer, and then come back to check your work. Welcome back. So we're asked the y-intercept, what does it mean in the context of the situation? So we want to identify the y-intercept, which is the point where the line of best fit crosses our y-axis. So we can see that it is between 25 and 30, but we're really not clear on exactly what that is by looking at it. So let's go back to what we were given. We were given that this is our line, our equation of our line of best fit. I can see that that's written in what we call slope-intercept form, where m represents the slope, and b represents the y-intercept. So looking at our y-intercept in our given equation, we can see that that y-intercept here is specified to be 28. So now I can go over to here and understand that this point where the line crosses is the ordered pair 0, 28. So when x is 0, y is 28. That also tells me that when I have a coordinate on the scatter plot, that any x-coordinate represents the hours of practice. I got that from my label of my x-axis. And y represents the number of points, which I got from the label on my y-axis. So this point right here, my y-intercept, represents 0 hours of practice, 28 points scored. So let's write that in a sentence. The y-intercept of the line of best fit is 28 and represents the number of points the team would have scored last season with no practice. So there you have part A. Let's move on to part B. Part B asks, what does the slope of the line of best fit represent in the context of this situation and explain your reasoning? So I'm going to ask you to pause the video now, record your answer, then come back to check. Welcome back. So we're asked about the slope this time in part B of our line of best fit and what does it mean to the context of this graph. So slope is another way to represent rate of change when we're talking about a real world problem. And this certainly is a real world problem. We're talking about a team scoring points and relationship to the number of hours they practice. So rate of change or slope is a ratio of y to x. 
So when we look at our specific y to x, our y is the number of points scored, and our x is the hours of practice. So the rate of change here, or the slope for the scatter plot, would be the ratio of the number of points to the hours of practice. And then we go back to the fact that we were given this is our line of best fit, the equation, and it's written in slope-intercept form. And slope is m in this equation. So we look at it and it's given to us that it's four. So we know that the slope or rate of change for the scatter plot is four. When we look at this as a ratio to the number of points to hours of practice, four is a ratio of four to one. So we can see that for every four points scored, we can assume there was about an hour of practice. So we can write that. The slope of the line of best fit represents the rate of points scored last season. The rate of points scored was a four points for every hour of practice. So this team can expect that every time they practice an extra hour, they could improve the number of points scored in their game about four. And that's based on the data the coach collected for their specific team. All right, let's talk about part C. Based on the line of best fit for the data, how many points would the team be expected to score in a game if they practiced for eight hours before the game and show or explain your reasoning? So I'm going to ask you to go ahead, complete part C on your own, come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So we're asked how many points we're expecting the team to score if they practiced for eight hours. So now we're ready to use our line of best fit. So let's record what we have. We know that we practiced for eight hours. Hours of practice is our X, and we wanna find Y. So we wanna find a data point on this graph when the hour of practice is eight. So we can see right here, we could use our line of fit and predict using our line of fit. So I could say with eight hours of practice going up to my line of fit that I predict there's 60 points scored in the game. Here's another way to look at that. We're going to use the equation of the line of best fit because that would be more exact. So when we say that 8 is x, we want to solve for y. So we're going to put 8 in for x, y equals 4 times 8 plus 28. 4 times 8 is 32, and 32 plus 28 is 60. So that we can see that that worked. 8 hours, 60 points scored. So given our using our line of fit to predict, the team would be expected to score about 60 points with eight hours of practice. So two ways to have approached this problem, using the graph and using the line of fit. All right, here's our last part, part D. Based on the line of fit for the data, how many hours would the team need to practice if they wanted to score 70 points in a game? And you're asked to show or explain your reasoning. So go ahead and pause now and come back when you're ready to check. Welcome back. So now we're using our line of best fit to determine how many hours we're gonna practice if we wanna score 70 points. So when we look at this written as an ordered pair, we don't know the number of hours, but the number of points that's desired is 70. So we could use our graph here. We could go up to 70, which would be right here, and across to our line of fit, and we could see that we're off the graph, but we can see that it's just above 10 hours. So let's use our line of fit. Our line of fit is y equals 4x plus 28, and now we don't know x, but we're gonna take our 70 and put that in for y, and then we're gonna solve for x. So let's rewrite that. So we're gonna replace y with 70 equals 4x plus 28, and we're gonna solve for x. So to solve for x, we first need to isolate our variable term. So we're gonna do the inverse of add 28 and subtract 28 from each side of the equation. 28 and negative 28 is a zero pair, leaving us zero. So we have 4x equals 70 subtract 28, which is 42. Now to solve for x, we're gonna divide each side by that coefficient of four. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. 4 divided by 4 is 1, or just x, and then 42 divided by 4 is 10.5, or 10 and a half. So we can see that as we predicted using our line of fit, that it was just above 10, and using our line of fit equation, 
we can see that we came up with exactly 10.5. So let's write a sentence to explain our reasoning. Using the line of fit to predict, the team would need to practice about 10 and a half hours to score 70 points in a game. So there you have it. That's predicting and interpreting with a line of fit on a scatter plot. And I thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon and have a great day.